So I'm going to try to talk and uh, deal with the computer at the same time. My name is Alexander Calameros. I'm with Metro Joint Development Program. So uh, our particular department is responsible for TOD projects. I'm going to tell you about what that means. Uh, I'm not managing the line itself. Uh, I might be able to answer some general questions, but I'm available to, uh, for any communication you have about the Joint Development Program. And I will, uh, and my colleague Kim, we will both make ourselves available to you uh, during today. And for follow-up questions, we will work to get you in touch with the correct Metro people so that you have the communication available to you. And uh, so if you have questions right now that you want answered, I would like to encourage you, jot them down on a piece of paper. If you will give them to me, I'll make sure every one of them is followed up because uh, we want you to have uh, access to information. There's no reason you shouldn't get it. Okay. So, uh, we get started. The uh, TOD program, you probably have heard that. We're going to talk about what it means, transit-oriented development. What does that mean? Uh, it is one thing, I can tell you right away, it's years off. This is not something that's going to be happening right away. It's going to take, uh, you know, three to five years just to construct the line. So, like Lucy says, we're going to be in this for, for uh, some years to come. At any rate, uh, we already have a very nice TOD program. Uh, uh, we're, we're giving this other terminology to you right away, joint development. What joint development means, and that's the name of our department, is uh, real estate projects that are carried out on metro land, right? Uh, and they're usually done with a private developer. So metro uh, is kind of more... Uh, uh, a landholder, and then we basically hire a developer to come in and do a project. In reality, it's uh, done through something called a ground lease, kind of like a regular apartment lease, only lasts for decades. Uh, joint development refers to the combination of a private developer with a public agency, in this case Metro. Together they call that joint development. It has to be done together. Uh, we cannot allow the private developer to do whatever the heck they want. But by the same token, it's free country and they are allowed to carry out their project according to what they can sell in the marketplace. Uh, we, refer, we, were, we refer to that type of business activity as a public-private partnership. So joint development, which is what we do, is a form a public-private partnership, and the rent that comes into Metro goes back into the uh, general fund to help pay for Metro operations. So this map is showing you these individual projects. It's taken from our website. If you go to our website, if you just Google Metro Joint Development Program, you'll be able to eventually get here. And these are interactive, these little numbers, like 41 and 22 and 32. Uh, these represent projects that are in various stages of either thought or they're completed, right? And you see that on your brochure. Uh, there's a list on the back. There's four types. The first one is completed. These are projects like Hollywood and Vine or Del Mar. They're all over the county. They're done. People are living there. Businesses are operating there. Another type of project is a project that is under construction. Uh, one of the projects I manage is called One Santa Fe. It's situated at the Metro Red Line Santa Fe Yard, not far from Metro headquarters. It's under construction now, $170 million project. It includes 20% affordable housing. It has uh, 77,000 square feet of retail. Metro itself will be a tenant there. Uh, great project to see if you like to see sticks and bricks. Uh, you can go out there and take a look. There's steel, there's wood. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating to see how the form is, is taking shape and will take shape. Uh, and, but don't wait if you want to see it because pretty soon it will be built. It's going up very rapidly. A third uh, category is called in negotiation. These are projects for which we have some form of board action already. 
Uh, they're not settled yet, however. Uh, once they're settled, there's a ground lease and they begin construction. These projects that are listed in the in negotiation column are in this intermediate area where the board has authorized us to proceed, but they simply haven't materialized yet in the form of a complete agreement. And then the last uh, uh, category you see is under consideration. These are projects that uh, haven't quite got started yet. The board has not approved them, uh, or they might have had a previous board approval, and they've been returned to the under consideration uh, listing because they just didn't materialize in the way we expected them to. So uh, until the, the board acts on them, we will, or we have an agreement of some form, they'll remain in that category. Now, if you're from the Crenshaw area and you look to see, there's not too many Crenshaw projects anywhere on that page. And the reason for that is because we don't have any yet. The way the joint development program works is when Metro gets done constructing the project, they hand them over to us. They hand over uh, properties that have been purchased for construction laydown. It takes a certain amount of real estate to actually build these lines. They need land for that. They buy the land. When they're done with it, they give it to us. In other uh, places along the line, they don't even buy it. They just acquire a construction easement for a few years and then it goes back. Uh, it's a very, you know, long, involved process, but the, uh, we, our colleagues in real estate are working on it as we speak, in, uh, obviously in con conjunction with our planning department and construction department. There's a lot of division of labor at Metro. Our division of labor, our responsibility, is to take these projects that are potential projects and bring them into reality. And the way we do that is uh, primarily through the private developer, uh, but you're not really going to see these Crenshaw projects materialize until they are transferred to our control. So I'm here today to give you a basic idea of what that means, and then we can begin to, to learn more about that over the coming years. You have a question already? Yeah, can you share timeline? Approximately how long from step one to two to this place? Let me give you the downside of the timeline. There's, there's a project uh, that uh, I don't know if I have a picture of. We'll get to it right in a second. Project at uh, First and Soto. Um, we're about to come out with a new RFP, a new request for proposals from developers. They'll probably be out very, very soon, anytime. Uh, that project was first approved by the board. The board approved the design guidelines for the project uh, in 2005. The line there, the east side extension, was still being constructed at that time. Uh, we tried to get a little bit ahead at that time. I was not even working for Metro at that time. But Metro tried to get ahead, and they issued the RFP in 2005. Uh, we entered into the first part of, we selected a developer, and the board approved the developer, and we entered into an agreement in 2008 for them, for a project there. The developer withdrew last year, in 2012. Uh, so we're gonna, we're about to issue the RFP again in 2013. So basically, for the last eight years, we've been trying to get the project moving, finally, the developer handed it back to us, and we're moving forward now with a new RFP. So even if I tell you <laughs> the timeline is whatever it might be, one, two, three, four, five years to actually get a project in the ground, we can't say. Because they're subject to city approvals, entitlements, uh, and in reality, even though the, the shortest possible time frame is probably about three years, until we get a hold of that property and begin that process, we, we can't even can't even get to that point. So it's it's speculative. Yes? I just have a question. Um, is this any, is this genuine in terms of like a flow, for example, we're seeing that under construction and negotiation, under construction and then completed? Can you say that something has to get to this category first or at least just one? Nothing will get to the construction category until it's been approved by the board. Okay. Uh, can you give some indication of what the reason was for the withdrawal, which might be a foundation for problems in the future? 
most of the withdrawals, uh, if not all of them, that occurred recently were due to the economy. There was simply, it was simply not possible to reconcile the uh, market potential in realized terms. In other words, they just couldn't afford to do the cover. Mm -hmm. The funds weren't there. The, the funding was, was not there. Yeah, among other things, the buyers weren't there, the renters weren't there, the economy was in the tank. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yes? I do not know. I don't think so. Uh, what we would need to do there is make sure that we give you to the uh, correct uh, person and staff that could give you a precise answer. To the best of my knowledge, nothing's being taken. Mostly commercial properties were taken. Uh, I'm not aware of any homes. Any, if you want that question answered, Show you. We have all of the, the environmental impact report documents, including all the latest editions. We have them in paper in the library, and we also have them on uh, CDs and look at on computers. Um, there were changes. One of the main changes was because originally, and I don't want to get into this because I talked to someone else in Metro about this. Santa Fe, even though they had closed that part of the line right here, they wanted to keep it. Personally, I think it was because they wanted more money for it. But they said, no, no, we want to keep this line. So originally, they were going to have to build three lines. See what I'm saying? Finally, Santa Fe, BNSF gave up and sold the line. So that meant they had to take a lot less property, because now they can build in the right of way, mm -hmm. rather than having to build around it. So we have all the drawings for all the stations. Um, it shows, I think there was very little, most of the Demolition was commercial for the station work, but very little at Crenshaw. There was some uh, realignment on the street. Yeah, there's, there are precise right of way maps that you can consult and that our staff can assist you with to help you answer that question. Uh, I simply do not know the details, so I will not speculate as to, as to exactly whether that's been done or not. I have to tell you, I don't know. And I don't want to give you any uh, false or misleading information. So, I, but I'm happy to provide you with the contact person so you can find yeah, out. The one, the one major one that I think most people already know about is the north side of Florence, where the station's going to be, which you can see on this little chart here, which this presentation will probably be talking about. But I'm pretty certain that all of those buildings are going to be torn down on the north side of Florence. Okay. Another question? Yes. Um, is it in cement yet, whether you're going to go under or over the bread? Don't know. Uh, my colleagues are in construction, are responsible for these decisions, and I'm not going to be able to tell you. Yeah, but they have never, I've been to several meetings, and each meeting you go to, they say, well, we're going to go under that, or we're going to go over. My concern is from Centinella to La Brea. You have a lot of people there. Yeah, and I, I will not be able to answer this question yeah. today. And, and Kim won't And then, too, are you going to do construction <clears throat> at night? I will not be able to answer that question tonight. And if you give me your contact information, I will ask my colleagues to contact you. Right. Yes? Is there some kind of regulation as to how far a building it can be from the line itself? There's all kinds of regulations, uh, but it's a pretty broad question. So unless we get into a specific, well, I, can be, I, can be specific um, I won't be able to answer it today. I, I, I am interested, but I'm, I came here to give you an overview of the program, and I'll do that. I cannot answer specific questions with respect to the construction of the Crenshaw line. I'm not prepared to do that today. No, but can you give me the rate? You said there's all kind of regulations. What's the dis distance between the line and the building? I frankly do not have knowledge of every single regulation that is involved with every single building. I just don't. I can't give that to you today. Again, if you have any questions about the construction of the line, um, I can actually help you with that. We have the right away maps that show exactly where the lines are going to be built. Um, as far as the bridge goes, um, 
I don't want to answer that question specifically, although my understanding was the original plan was to go under La Brea and build the station where the Walgreens is and tear down the Walgreens. For two reasons, because of the earthquake fault in the area and also because of people in the community saying they wanted the station on the Florence level, not down below where the Walgreens is, and also because of concern about the factories. When they got the line from Santa Fe, they moved the line a little bit further south, closer to Florence, which means the station is going to be level with Florence, which means that we have a bridge because you can't have it go under La Brea and then come up all the way to the level of Florence at that point. It's not an engineering possibility. So Bill's absolutely right. At this point in time, Metro has planned to raise the Florence La Brea station flush with Florence, which means that there will be an above grade or raised crossing at La Brea. That's that question. I think it's showing me, for us at the city, that there's a desire for the community to know more about the construction aspect of this project. And what I would suggest is that we put on another workshop that specifically addresses that area of the project. But this workshop primarily is going to be about transit-oriented development, talking about it from a regional perspective, talking about it from a metro perspective, and then talking about it from a city perspective. So unfortunately, we do not have the staff here, the construction staff, to answer the construction questions that you have. Like Alex is saying, and Joel and myself, if you have any questions, what we can do is we can collect those, and we will ensure that you get the answers to your questions. I'm looking at the map that was provided on the fact sheet, over your fact sheet. And from what I've heard from previous emails, because I received them from previous workshops, the Florence La Brea station is not actually going to be Florence and La Brea. It's going to be closer to Market Street. It will be between Market and La Brea. So with the overpasses that you were mentioning, would that be actually at La Brea or Florence or right in the middle? At La Brea. We're talking specifically about the crossings. Crossing La Brea. Okay, so it will be at Florence and La Brea. Yes. It will be at Florence and Market. It will cross the station area. Okay, so it's, no, I understand. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
and then are owned by Metro and leased back to a developer to create for us a great uh, city hub or uh, apartments or something like that. Okay. And that's what you're showing. Exactly. And it's happened in places that it's already finished. Not going to happen to us till after it's finished. Please, I have exactly. vision even <laughs> a very nice summary, and uh, I've, I'll probably say it three times in a different way until we get to the end, and I'll, I'll be happy to move forward. It's kind of impossible to give this presentation without doing the overview first, and as soon as you hear the overview, your mind comes up with 10,000 different questions, and, I've, and there I absolutely sympathize with that. I'm, I'm in tune with your, with your needs. However, I only have my little corner of the world, that's why I cannot answer these other questions. I will, will be able to help you get those answers by helping you get to my comments. I just cannot answer them. Okay, so, you're not working today. This is a piece of pedestrian. The point of having you do this now is so that a perspectives are in the play now as a line is being built and yes. they don't put things in place where it precludes Exactly. I There's, it's a very like important like point that we want to really get to. Point, yeah. You can thank the supervisor's office for sending him here on his day off. <laughs> you should appreciate him because he's one of the key people, Fernando, uh, when he's not working. He's asking us to help him do exactly what you described. What yes. And we're gonna, I'm going to tell you more, but it's a very good time to tell you. Crenshaw Line has environmental clearance and project clearances to the board. No joint development projects are included in the Crenshaw Line clearance. These are entirely separate environmental clearances. They will take place after we get the opportunity to present our ideas for the project. We don't even have that process yet underway, but that is precisely when these projects are subject to local land use control. If they're within the city of Englewood, the private developers will be knocking on the door of planners at the single venue at the city of Inglewood asking them what they can do. Okay. Will there be community input? There must be, by definition. But again, I'm, you're, you're going to get me on a sidetrack and I'm going to be here all day and I'll, I'll answer it. It's a very precise question. Will we have input? Some real estate projects do not require community input. Straight answer to a straight question. Planning controls, land use controls, local zoning ordinances that are already the law of the land when they're in effect allow certain real estate projects to proceed with ministerial approvals. The city officials can approve those projects with whatever they feel is the correct amount of input by law. That That's not up to Metro. Is that then as an So, so let's stop taking questions. Let me let me get through a few more slides. We're going to go around in circles if we don't. Uh, so, next slide. We talked about this briefly. See that a little bit more clearly. But I will give you uh, uh, one or two examples. I mentioned first in Soto. It was in the in negotiations column for a while. Now it's back over under the blue column. So it will get released as a new RFP. We will look at those projects. When we selected a developer, we'll bring that selection to the board for the board's approval. That will be something called an exclusive negotiation agreement. It gives the developer a chance to start to talk to us about brass tacks and to bring the project back later for approval for a joint development agreement. Ultimately, 
These projects, these joint development projects, require an environmental clearance that is ultimately subject to local jurisdiction as well. So some very complex definitions, we can get into those, but they're very straightforward and they require local land use control by definition. These are not Metro coming out with projects, imposing them on communities. They are Metro proposing projects, local communities assuming responsibility for the local land use jurisdiction that is already their right. Okay. So, what do we see? When we bring these projects forward, there's a nice little list here. Uh, I'm going to read these. Normally I don't read slides, but I want to make sure that you understand what we see. We are about reducing cars and increasing transit. We're interested in people taking the bus, taking the train, taking the right rail. That's what we're about. We are unabashedly also trying to cut down on traffic. That's what auto use reduction means. And that occurs in uh, areas of the county where Metro's implementing HOV lanes and other types of highway improvements. So it doesn't just mean ignore cars, ignores highways, it means cutting back on that. It's good for the community because reduced congestion is generally uh, associated with better quality of life. Density is something that is important but consistent with the surrounding neighborhoods. So when you hear density, you should not automatically assume uh, there will absolutely be a ridiculous amount of cars and it will be terrible, uh, but it does mean increased land use intensity. Uh, single family homes are typically not involved with the process that we're working on because they're around transit stations. We're talking about a very high density of use, high intensity of use, a lot of people coming in and out of those transit stations. And by the way, <laughs> that is one of the key reasons why we have a joint development department. When we create a piece of land near a transit station and Metro owns it, we don't want to hand that away to just anybody. Nowadays, we, have a, we live in a world where terrorism is something that we have to all think about. We're in the lines at the airport uh, just because of 9-11. And that is one of the reasons, one of the fundamental reasons, it's not the only reason, it's one of the reasons why Metro retains ownership of these properties near transit stations. <coughs> Uh, but we want a mix of uses that includes usually residential, uh, multifamily apartments uh, for rent, and it usually includes some form of retail, but we really don't dictate. We, we allow the market and the developers to tell us what they think they can do effectively, and sometimes they just can't. Uh, upgrades in, in re regards metro facilities when we have, for example, a station that's already been built, we don't want to tear down the station if we can possibly avoid it, uh, but we do want to add facilities. So for example, I hope you'll see in the coming months, and, and uh, uh, perhaps I'll have something to do with that, something called mobility hubs. We would like to see, uh, and it's already been described in some of the other uh, projects we've taken recently to the board, where we would ask for improvements to existing metro stations and transit facilities to improve the use of transit. We call those mobility hubs. We can talk about those more later, but they're, it's good stuff. Uh, we want strong neighborhood links. We want to be able to walk from the station into the neighborhood. We don't want the project itself that we implement to impede progress to the neighborhood. So we want to make sure we get the sidewalks right and the connections, and we can talk more about that, but we don't want the transit-oriented project to become a ignore the neighborhood project. Uh, we want pedestrian orientation and transit patron experiences, as I've mentioned. Uh, we typically do these on a long-term ground lease, and they are subject to fair market return. We cannot do projects that don't pencil. Uh, that means we cannot do projects that are economically infeasible. They must be able to return rent to Metro. They must be able to return some benefit to our system. We cannot do them for free. Uh, and we uh, pretty much adhere and, and embody and embrace sustainable development goals when it comes to real estate projects like this that's typically involved with green building practices. You may have heard about lead definitions. What that basically means is they're more energy efficient. Uh, they use modern building technologies, recycled materials, and a broad 
use of, uh, of planning concepts to make a good design for the building. They're not just thrown up haphazardly. Okay?